important though it is, the mission, you know, the Salvation Army, it's easy to kind of look on today, self-denial, just as a kind of money-raising um, which we are a part of. And by doing so, we can overlook the spiritual principle of giving as part of our Christian discipleship. And the initial inspiration behind the Salvation Army's um, self-denial appeal identified three aspects of self-denial. You know, the denying of self, a sense of, of sacrifice, the act of giving out of our own deep into our pockets and using the resource in wonderful ways it's God's mission giving richly everything in life has a price no one can escape of some kind the question is on what altar do we make that sacrifice Last year in, in July, for those who were able to go to uh, the O2 Arena, the Salvation Army celebrated the boundless celebration, didn't it, of the work of the Salvation Army. And um, whilst we were there, we, we bumped into um, Commissioners Mike and Joan Parker, who obviously were on this division um, many years ago. And in conversation with um, uh, the... I was asking about their work at the time they were still in, in the and the way that the locals there saw that word sacrifice and Mike was saying that many of the salvationists in that territory they worked as, as farmers and he said they don't call it sacrifice when they work hard for many weeks in those paddy fields turning over the soil good depth taking their precious rice seeds and burying them into the ground. For them, sowing is an investment. And by digging deep, they hope for a rich return. In their minds, the soil is not a grave, but it's a harvest field. An investment in trust, an investment in hope. So, like I said, we're going to look at the of self denial. And the first is for his sake. That phrase, self denial, occurs, you know, six times in the New Testament. But John 12 emphasizes the same truth without actually using that. Unless our hair as wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Indeed, the principle is captured perfectly in the words of Jesus recorded in Matthew 10. In verse 29, when it says this, Whoever finds his Sorry, whoever finds his life will lose it. This is life. For my sake, Jesus will find it. The use of other words associated with self-denial, things like um, sacrifice, commitment, give it something of a negative tone. However, it's really like looking at a double-sided coin. You know, in scripture terms, when the coin is split. It is the opposite side of dedication, which is also positive. We are not the loser. What we give for his sake, it is <coughs> not lost. It is an investment. Self-denial is about commitment to God and in respect of our giving, needs to be seen within that context. This is not a negative. 
Because giving, whether it's our time, our treasures, our talents, it's about a commitment to God, isn't it? And it's about glorifying within our lives, in all that we do. It's a positive responding to the understanding that life is a trust given to us by God himself. We have to trust it and treasure it and nurture it for God. The important words in our text are for my sake, as it says there. Are we digging deep, to use that farmer's analogy? Not just deep into our pockets, our faith. Are we giving to him? Are we giving out of love for he who gave his all for each one of us? You know, when we are, our giving is beyond value. It has kingdom value. It makes the smallest gift when given in such a spirit a real treasure. We will indeed be like the widow of old, whom Jesus referred to in the reading that we had. She gave that little tiny coin a mite, as it's known. But because it represented her love for God and her total commitment to God, she was judged to be giving so richly. The important point Jesus was any act of giving must be an expression of our dedication and the denial of selfishness and of selfish reasons. The contrast Jesus made was with givers within that temple and it illustrates that, doesn't it? As Catherine Booth once said, it reminds us self-denial will prove your love for Christ, she said. The second point is for the sake of the work of the kingdom. In the Salvation Army, we have quite rightly linked self-denial with our mission needs. Our giving is our mission throughout the world. Areas that don't have the resources that we have. But we're not physically able to be there, but we can give something towards the growth of God. Let me once again refer to what I said about his experience in Indonesia. He said that the territory, though it is, it is in need and is a recipient of the support of the appeal like this over the years from the Self Denial Fund, he said that unbelievable the way that his own soldiers, his own salvationists, have taken on board giving themselves and he said that within this year they'll become self-supportive but it still has the need to meet of supporting their own mission which is a hundred schools 20 hospitals 20 homes for the elderly and for children and it's no coincidence because they can see support being given to them that they too want to themselves and it's not just the financial side of it too he was saying that the membership has grown immensely during these past few years souls have been saved hallelujah to that integrated mission is working effectively and the dedication and investment of time treasures and talents brings and has been bringing a rich harvest for them you see, friends, they that digging deep themselves is an investment into the kingdom in their own lives of God. And 
what is given to them. And thirdly, for our own sake, what we give becomes an external possession. The things we do, the way we deny self for the sake of his kingdom, leads us into a deeper knowledge <coughs> of his love and a greater experience of God's faithfulness. It can be seen in it should challenge every area of our lives. Regarding our time, it's not just about what we do on a Sunday that matters. But how we use every day of our lives throughout the week. Regarding our money, it's not just about how we earn it, because that needs to be God honouring, but how we actually spend. We have been blessed with it indeed, haven't we? Indeed, it's not only about what we give, but about what we do with what. Regarding our talents, we can use or abuse those beautiful talents God has given to us. We can develop them or we can allow them to decay and simply waste away. Regarding our, family, our friends, people whose lives resonate with ours, are we good examples? Models, good supporters, good encouragers to those people. And regarding the grace that God, do we nurture our souls through prayer and scripture and the Christian disciplines? You know, for Christians, nothing is owned, it is held in a trust for us. Our possessions, our talent, money, energy, even our lives are not our own but God's. On loan to us. There's a song in the Salvation Army songbook which has that line, Not my own, I belong to thee. To accept this principle means digging deep into our thinking and at our lives should be lived in deep gratitude for his love and blessing shown in our acts of worship and in the exercise and declaration of our faith. Life is a trust. Everything we have belongs to God. So we are accountable for what we do with our lives and the possessions that we are blessed with. There are no excuses for not recognising our responsibility to God. Scripture is clear upon this. We are responsible to God to live and being good trustees of what we have been given. Finally, friends, always remember this. The extension of God's love is our aim. His presence is our support. His claims are our argument. These statements must remain with us and continue to inspire our motives when self-denial is upon us. The truth is that giving, investing, and dedication of what we have is just a basic building block in our growth as Christians, isn't it? Grace teaches us that giving is a privilege given by God and becomes a measure of our love for Him. Is our giving today, and I don't mean the envelopes on this mercy seat, is our giving today a reflection of our desire to invest, dedicate, consecrate our lives to God? 
May we all give richly, not just for self-denial, but our act of spiritual throughout every day of our lives. Shall we pray? Lord, as we have given back to your kingdom's work today through this altar service, may free it be a sacrificial way, knowing that we've given to help grow the work around the world in our partner territories that we've focused upon during these past few weeks. But help us to be challenged too in that it's not just the giving of these in these areas, but it's a total giving every day of our lives, our talents, our time, our riches, to the ongoing mission right here in this place of Leeds. Coming weeks, help our daily prayers to continue to remember those we've promised to partner. We would ask all of these things in the precious and beautiful name of Jesus, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. Amen. Amen.